pancakes, blueberry muffins, strawberries, and bananas. Welcome back to another Let's Play Mega Man X. Alright. Now, where were we? Oh, that's right. We're going to take on Spark Mandrel today. Ah. Spark Mandrel is one of the more annoying stages to me. So, don't expect any good advice from here. Other than avoid the electrical, I'd say they're sparks. They're throughout the stage until later on in the game, but I'll explain what happens with them later on in the game. Alright. Now, this room's gonna get dark. Eventually, some enemies will go by and light up the room. But, from... You can actually see where the holes are and everything. They don't really need to be there. But, just for... Um... Oh, uh, what's the... Playthrough sake, make sure you shoot them because they will eventually get in your jumping path. Now, this enemy here can cause quite a problem. He's got three different moves. He shoots down sparks like that. He drops the water, the little bubbles, which seem to uh, stop you from moving for a little bit. He also likes to come down from the roof and land and then bounce and shoot more. He'll reattach himself to the roof and sometimes he'll even bounce multiple times off the ground. As you get him weaker, he'll even start to shoot those uh, electrical sparks at more rapid speeds. And after a few shots, he's done. Alright. What I didn't explain about the acceleration kit, the foot part, is you can also dash off walls, which helps out in a lot of situations, which will help out in this part right here. Excuse me a second, I gotta sneeze. Never mind, I don't. Oh crap, got shot. I know it's gonna happen three fourths of the way through the recording, I'll sneeze or I'll, it'll catch me off guard. Alright. Now, as you notice, these little things like to turn and then shoot in different directions. They shoot two in a V formation and then in a straight line. So just beware of that. This little guy likes to shoot torpedoes like crazy. Well, not torpedoes, miss. <laughs> See what I mean? Alright, here's our first heart tank of the game. To get it, you can bounce yourself, you can dash off the wall. Alright. Heart tanks increase your health in the game. There are eight of them. Since there's eight robot master I mean eight mavericks, there is eight heart tanks. Alright, we're about halfway done through the stage. Whoa, hello. Ah, There's one thing I don't like about this game. Enemy responds. Okay. I mean, they're great for grinding for, like, uh, lives or stuff. Alright, here we are at Spark Mandrel. Spark Mandrel, again, is weak against Shotgun Ice. Now, what I didn't tell you is, you'll notice that they'll change, uh, X will change colors with the weapons. And you'll also notice that there's a good bit of amount to the weapon. So, you don't have to worry about running out anytime soon. Alright. Now, when it comes to Spark Mandrel, Spark Mandrel has multiple moves. One is where he'll jump up and uh, start to crawl across the ceiling. Eventually, he'll get to the point where he'll punch the ground and send spark waves everywhere. Or run and dash towards you and punch the wall. He also likes to jump around like Chill Penguin did and just punch a uh, little crap out of you. There's the punching the ground. Other than that, Spark Mandrel can be fairly easy. Especially if you can time your shots right, you can actually get an endless loop of hitting him with the shotgun ice to where he can't move at all. And with that, Spark Mandrel's done. And with that, we acquire the electric spark. Which I accidentally skipped because I'm stupid. I hit the joystick. Alright, well let's get out and save this.
If you're following me along, you can use my password if you'd like to, uh, if you're playing on the actual SNES or an emulator without using save states, you can freely use my password. Alright, onward to Armored Armadillo. This stage is really fun. I also find this to be the best stage to collect, um, for grinding for energy and lives and stuff like that. There's a lot of enemies. Alright, first thing we're going to want to do is hop on this little, uh... Well, you don't have to hop on it, you can actually, you know, ignore it. But about the end, you'll want to jump off and not get hit by the bats. Alright! Whoa. I finally beat Banjo-Kazooie this morning. I, uh... Went and got it for the Xbox Live. Xbox 360. Alright, here's our first sub-tank. Um, I went and got it for the Xbox 360 and uh, beat it this morning after four days. Uh, I started on 2E today, too, as well, and um, I gotta say, it's pretty good. I'm, I can't wait to get to nuts and bolts, then. Now, here's how the sub-tanks works. As you noticed, you heard a little, like, ring in the background. When your health is full, it'll start to fill up the sub-tank. Hold on, let me see if I can get another energy here, and I'll... Listen carefully. Did you hear them? That's because your health is full, it's filling up the sub-tank. Ow. Rude. It only happens when your health is full, though, so... Don't be expecting it to, uh, fill when you're not. I'm trying to get it full so you can hear what it sounds like when it's full, the sub-tank. Oh, you bastard. Whoa. But yeah, so far I like Banjo Tooie. I don't know what it is. I like that one actually more than I like oh, Extra Man. Than I like uh, the first one. Alright, what I'd like to do instead of staying behind him and shooting him is slide off the side there just to get this heart tank up here. Alright, that's two for the price of one. As you noticed, our health is starting to get a little bigger. If you heard that little ding, that means your energy tank is full. And I just got another extra man. Alright, Armored Armadillo is weak against the electric spark. Let's rock this thing out. Now, Armor and Armadillo has multiple moves. Armor and Armadillo likes to curl up in a ball and bounce around all over the place, which makes him invincible until you hit him with the electric shock. Once you hit him with the electric shock, he loses his armor, and he's vulnerable any time. He also likes to stand out, likes to stand still, and shoot little beams at you. Other than that, Armor and Armadillo is no threat at all after his armor is gone. If you do it without the armor, yeah, it's going to take a while. But he's done. I also beat Double Dragon Battletoads today in 42 minutes and 15 seconds. I am proud of that. On the actual, on the old actual NES. Alright, and we got the Rolling Shield. Alright. I'm leaving this up here in case anybody wants my passwords. Instead of just passing right through it, I'm letting everybody see it. Alright, next stage we're going to is Launch Octopus. Three masters in one video, and maybe one more. I might record... I might actually just finish this LP today and upload it in uh, intervals. Alright, now, this is the first water stage that you're going to hit in Mega Man X. And just like in every other Mega Man game, you, um, what's the word I want to use, um, buoyant in water. In other words, when you hit the bottom, you can jump really high. Just like in every other Mega Man game. 
Now, a lot of you are wondering, didn't you upload episode 1 before? Yeah, I did, but it didn't uh, come out like I planned, so I took it down and re-uploaded it. What I planned was for it to be full screen. All I can tell you to do with this guy is shoot, 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 shoot. I don't care how you do it, just blow the ever-loving crap out of him. But yeah, it didn't. It wasn't full screen like I planned it, and I plan on having all my videos from now on to be full screen. So, and it wasn't full screen. It was only like widescreen version. It wasn't really anything. It still had the black lines on it. And I wasn't happy with that. Come on. Now, as you notice, this one's a darker color, which means he's going to take a lot more, more to kill. He also has one extra move where he'll actually blow the water back out like that and push you up against the wall. Alright. That is a toll on my hand. Alright. Heading up here, we're actually going to want to hitch a ride on the ship and shoot the blue core. To no end. Alright, once we're down here, we're going to want to take out this little guy here. Um, his weaknesses are around the head and the tail, depending on which one you'd rather shoot. I'd rather shoot the head because it's a lot quicker to hit. But once he starts floating down, it's a lot easier to hit the tail, and I'm going to die. Yeah, I'm going to die. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Maybe not. Come on. Don't you screw me over. Back. Away with ye. Would you die? Come on. There we go. Can I land here? Okay, good. And back here is our third heart tank. After that, we're going to want to head straight up, and then we're going to want to go straight to the right, because after that little fight, we got another one here. He's the exact same, except we don't have to worry about spikes this time. So, he ought to be a lot easier. Unleash all the ammo that you got into him and get him done quick. And plow. Oh, darn it. Alright. Hopefully I get some good energy on this. Awesome. Full health. Right before the boss, too. Ow. Well, so much for full health. Twice. Alright. Launch Octopus has actually two weaknesses. But we don't have the other weakness. Well, I can't say it's a weakness. It's a way to help beat him faster. But it's not officially a weakness. This weakness. His weakness officially is the rolling shield. Now, he has two different moves. He has several moves. One where he'll shoot missiles at you, and one he'll shoot homing fish on you. The other is he'll like to create a tornado. Other than that, he just hops around and does nothing. If you get caught in his tornado, he will actually suck life from you and fill his back up. So, you gotta be wary of that. I will show the uh, other strategy of what happens with the other weapon then, later on. Till then, we're just going to have to deal with that. And with that, three masters down in one video. Booyah. Alright. Next video... We will be taking on Boomer Kawanger. That's totally not a suggestive name. Alright guys, I'll catch you later. Remember, pancakes. <laughs>